recently, I've been researching no reference exceptions, and I found some things that were really beneficial to me that I feel like helped me kind of refine how I write my code. So let's jump into the code and I'll show you a couple of things that I learned. Okay, so here we are in our first set of code, and basically what I've done here is I've created five uh, variables, a uh, notable int, a notable bool, date time, character, and string. And I've assigned these all to a null value. And then I've just done a console write line with those values in. Now, all of these values are null. So what would you expect to see in these particular instances? Would you expect to see a null reference exception on any of them? Let's see what we get. So here's the results of running that code. It actually writes everything out and just leaves empty where those values are placed. Now, why is that the case? Well, in this particular instance, you might be thinking, well, none of these are reference types. All of these are value types. And you'd almost be right if that's what you're thinking because int, bool, date, time, in, character are all value types. String is actually a reference type though. So what actually is happening here is that dollar sign, it's a um, identifier that basically says that this is an interpolated string. There's actually a null check on this interpolated string. So what that means is, is in this instance, you will never get a null reference exception because it's going to check and see if it's a null. And if it is, it's just going to write an empty string. So what if we actually made a change here? And what if we ran this? Now, one of the things I wanna point your attention to is the green underline here under uh, null test string. What this is telling you is that this string may be null here. So it's not telling you on any of the others because it's a value type. And you can't get a null reference exception on a value type. Because what a null reference exception actually is, is on the stack for a reference type, there's a pointer to the heap to where the data is actually located. And if there is, if that pointer points to nowhere, then you're gonna end up getting a null reference exception. And that's what the IDE is trying to tell us here. It's trying to tell us, hey, you're calling to string on a reference type that is likely null at this point. So let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens here. So here we go, we get a null reference exception. Now, why did we get a null reference exception in this instance, but not in the previous? Well, again, that's because the interpolated string has a null check. But by us calling to string, that supersedes that null check. Now, one of the things you could do in this instance, if you were ever dealing with a section of code like this, is you could put the null conditional operator in front of the to string. And essentially what this does is it says, hey, if this uh, reference type at this point is null, don't actually execute. Let's see what happens when we do that. Again, here you can see our code executes just as it did in the very first example, runs through everything because what's happening is it's not calling this to string. So I'm curious, did these tests work out like you thought they would? I know for me, there was some things that I was kind of surprised about. Like for example, I didn't know the string interpolation actually had a null check. So when I first ran this line of code, this line 65 here, I was expecting it to throw a null reference exception and it didn't. Did you happen to know that the string type, even though it really looks like a value type, is actually a reference type. But if you want a full list of what are value types and what are reference types, I'll have links for those in the description below. But let's get into a more complex example. So I've created three records. One's for category, one's for product, and one's for rating. Just some basic, simple things. Each one of these top tiers has a list included in it. So if we go over to the code, we can see that I've created a category. The category is called phones. I gave it an ID of one and gave it a list of empty products. Now let's say we wanted to get one of those products and then we wanted to get a review for one of those products. So let's say we had a piece of code like this and instead of just doing uh, first or default, let's actually throw a where in there. And this is a very common piece of code that you may see. You can see here by the green underline, it's trying to tell us that something is going to be null. And if you hover over it, it tells you that there's a dereference of a possibly null reference. So yeah, that's super simple, right? So how could we go about fixing this particular issue? 
Well, one thing that I think is important to note is the length of the green underline. It underlines all the way and then stops at review. And so what it's actually saying is this first or default could be null. If you were to do something like just right after this first or default, add a question mark. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we run this code? Yeah, let's go ahead and add a console, see if we get here calling it success and we execute this code and you'll notice here that our success is actually called. We didn't get a null reference exception even though this is underlined saying that there's a possibility of a null. Why not? What actually is happening here is when we get to this point it's saying hey if this is null don't do this. So it's actually breaking the rest of the expression. Review just ends up being null and it's not going to throw the null reference exception. So does this really solve our problem? Well, it kind of depends. It depends on how you want to write your code, what is needed for your particular instance. But let's look at a way that we could write this that would be a little bit more intuitive. So we're wanting to get that review, right? So let's first look for our product. So we could do this and then we could actually check, not produce, product. Now what we could do is we could actually check if our product is null. And then if it is, we could do something like just, or we could throw possibly like if you're do if this is like something where you're searching and you're wanting to return results, perhaps you have a custom not found exception, um, or you just want to throw a 404 if this is a, a web API. You could do something like that here in this instance, right? But then if product is null, we could go on further and say ratings dot. Now we've gotten that review. And you'll notice we're still getting dereference of a possible null reference. And the reason we're getting this is because we don't do anything here. If you were to actually say throw, so if you were actually to throw an error here, now you see that that's gone. And then we have no issues here. And so this would be something that would be a little bit more intuitive. Um, one thing I might recommend is just doing something like this as well. Um, if you have just a very simple uh, query, you can just include it right in the first or default. It makes the code a little bit cleaner, a little easier to read. At this point, we'll throw an exception here if product is null, but then our review will still be null because we've added the null conditioner operator. Because at this instance, review is null, you might want to go ahead and add an review if review is null and now throw new exception. And again, this would probably want to be some type of custom exception, right? This code is much better in the sense that it is checking and making sure that as you step through it, everything is working. I mean, you could do something like this where you leave it just like this and then you just do this. We have to add the no conditioner operator there. So this basically does the same thing as this. The only difference is you're never going to know, is it the product that's null or is it the review, the rating that's null? So this is a little bit, gives you a little bit more information, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot an error. So what are some of our takeaways in this video? So it's good to know what a value type is and what a reference type is. It's also good to, you know, pay attention to what the information your IDE is giving you. And then understanding what your end goal is. How exactly do I want to handle that? Do I want to handle it gracefully? Do I want to go ahead and let it throw the null reference exception? Uh, what information do I want to provide back to the user? Asking yourself these questions will help you kind of understand how exactly do I want to address the possibility of this null reference exception. I hope this video was helpful to you. If there's anything that you feel like maybe could be explained more clearly or have an adjusted explanation of, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Until next time.